Okay. So lastly, before we go, I think we wanted to go through our playoff trust rankings on the Raptors. And um, Blake, I'll start with you. Who is the player on the Raptors that you trust the most come time for playoffs? So the way when you gave this to me, the way I'm kind of contextualizing it is not the player I think is going to be the best necessarily, but the player who I trust the most to repeat the regular season performance the same way we've seen it and expected yeah. in the playoffs. There's a big health question mark with this one, but mine is OG Ananobi. We've seen him in the playoffs. Okay. Nothing nothing like changes it. about his game. He is, other than Fred and Gary, their most reliable three-point shooter, whether that's catch and shoot in the corner, whether that's on the wing. Mm -hmm. um, he has shown, yes, we wanted, we spent the early part of the season and, and the offseason being like, hey, could OG get more touches? Could he handle the ball a little bit more? But he's also shown as this team's gotten healthier and as other guys have expanded their roles, he's still very capable of sliding back into that, say, 17 to 18% usage role and being efficient within that. Mm -hmm. And I still think as good as Scotty Barnes and Pascal Siakam and Precious Achua and those guys have been and how much, especially in Achua's case, he's improved and gotten more reliable defensively, OG is still the guy I want on the other team's best player Unless maybe it's a, it's a quicker point guard, then I'd lean Fred. But in most cases, OG's the guy I want defending the other team's best player. So when you look at what does this guy mean to the team in the regular season, 31 and 16 the Raptors are when OG plays. Pretty good. And um, we've seen him do it in the playoffs before. We just don't yeah. know if he's going to be healthy for the whole run. Yeah, which, he look, you know, I think he'll be fine. I mean, it's, it's a thigh contusion. He'll play. Um, his career three-point shooting percentage in the playoffs, obviously this is limited sample, um, but he's played 21 playoff games, 43% from three. And, of course, he has the uh, I'm not – I don't shoot trying to miss yeah. shot as I didn't well. even know that stat. This was just all – this was all vibes-based since you guys did the vibes-based oh. playoff ranking. But I, I just – I can't imagine anyone who feels less bothered by a big moment. Than I, I agree with you, actually. Yeah, you know what? That's a great pick. All right. Alex, who is the second most trustworthy player on the Raptors in a playoff setting? I'm going to go with Fred, I think, based yeah. on the stuff that Blake said in the last segment as well. Like, as much as there might be concerns about what his health is from game to game, like, you know what you're going to get in terms of Fred's floor. And, you know, in terms of him running the team and the things that he's going to do on the defensive end. I will be interested to see, though, depending on the matchups, how teams kind of try to take the ball out of Fred's hands and mm -hmm. how that affects his his offense, but I think he's such a more complete player now than say 2018, 2019 yeah. that he is going to have an impact on every single game. So, you know, for me, when, when you talk about trust, it's, you know, how many guys, you know, are going to just have that impact every game in a playoff series. And, and I think Fred's going to have an impact on every single game. Yeah. I think you're going to need it to, from him too. I think I agree with him in terms of the health. Honestly, I probably put Pascal too, just because of the fact that the health is, is, is a bigger question mark. Um, however, as I mentioned earlier, he is looking a lot better of late. So that's a very positive sign for me. Um, I think with Fred, even looking back at the Boston series, I don't think anyone played that great offensively. Fred was like relative to sort of how everyone else was basically only OG played close to average and, um, and Kyle was good. Mm -hmm. Everyone else offensively in that series was, was kind of a struggle to me. Like, I think Fred had some moments. I know people go back to him getting blocked by um, Grant Williams at the end of that game seven. That was not an ISO, by the way. The Raptors wanted to run the hammer action for opposite wing corner three for Norman Powell. That play got blown up because the Celtics had played the Raptors literally seven straight times. So they're like, okay, we know that play's coming. They, so that was a good execution by the Celtics. And so the Raptors had to, ex you know, had to come up with something. Kyle had fouled out, whatever. Um, the context is important in that play. But I, I, I do trust Fred. Um, in that setting, I know defensively he's going to be very important. But, you know, for me, I, I would actually put Pascal, too. I don't know, Blake, what do you think about that? Sorry, I was just going to ask with Fred, too. I know some of the talk has been the streakiness in the playoffs. But without looking, what do you think the gap is between his career three-point percentage in the regular season and the playoffs? I don't know, man, like two or three percentage points. Like, Yeah, I'm going to say that, too, because yeah. I think he had, he had a great actually, run. Actually, need one more player on the Thunder. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> 38.3 to 37.8. It's nothing. It's, 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 it's half a percentage. Yeah, I mean, he had a great Milwaukee series, a great yeah. Golden State series. Yeah. And it's despite, like, even with not playing s super well overall in that Boston series, he shot the lights out for that playoffs. It's really the Philly series where yeah. he shot terribly. Yeah. yeah. 
and some of the other stuff wasn't there in the Boston series, but yeah. And anyway, to get to Pascal, I I would have him right there as well. I know that this is an iffier one because the last time we saw Pascal in the playoffs, it was that Boston series. Sure. It feels like a really long time ago, but also that's the last playoff data point we have, right? It was this amazing coming out party until the all-star break or so. And then there's, there aren't many guys that the the pandemic hit harder from a performance standpoint in the short term than Mm -hmm. Siakam. Um, I think that the level he's gotten to, though, since, you know, you can go back to whatever it is, December 28th, when he came back from the COVID absence, he's been an all NBA caliber guy since then. Um, Will, when we were teeing up kind of the stretch run here, you mentioned the stat that he's one of the most heavily double team guys in basketball. And despite that, the efficiency is still pretty solid. He's at almost two to one assists per turnover, which is tough for a guy who is going against that much size and handling the ball at that extreme a level Um, the three point shot has come back to almost 36% on the year. Right. Look, if, if Pascal hasn't earned your trust for another shot at being the, the top guy in a playoff series, I don't know what else he could have done to, to build that back up. Yeah. My, my thing with Pascal is I'm just looking strictly at what he does in the game and how his game has evolved. I think in that, um, in the bubble season, there was obviously tons of things that sort of affected him there. I think also his approach was different. Like I think early in the games, you would always see him take an early three, just sort of see if he's got that range and sort of see if that can open up the drive, all that stuff. He doesn't need the three whatsoever at all this year. I mean, it, the team needs the three more than he does, but he can get his game with or without the three. He's attacking one-on-ones. He's making the right reads, making the right passes. That's the part I trust. That That's what I need him to do, create. Not necessarily necessarily always score like 30, 35 points, but it's to make the right decisions offensively each time down. And that's what I've seen from him all season. So I actually don't have any fear of it. It's like, what's he going to do? Lose his touch on, on floaters and little flip shots and drives? Like, I don't think so. He no, takes I efficient think... shots. So I think that it's not a situation where if he gets cold, he's going to fall off. Doesn't even shoot the three. Yeah. No, I think his game is way more playoff proof now. I like agree. In yeah, terms of like it's all one on one mid range. My, kind my of stuff. only my only concern would be if he goes in a series, feels that pressure to be the number one guy and but tries I mean, like, to be a score only, something like that. But I'm not worried about yeah, that. Yeah, I don't even I'm know. I don't think that. that's in his nature anymore. You even yeah. look at the clutch stats this yeah. year, and you know, that was the biggest knock last year was his his performance improved over the bubble season in the playoffs last year. But there was a lot of hey, his clutch performance, his clutch performance, his clutch performance. It wasn't very good. Shooting efficiency wise, he hasn't been crazy good in the clutch this year but what he has done is first of all he's been a really good passer in those situations really good recognition of i'm drawing way more defensive attention and fred's there or gary's there og's there Mm -hmm. um he's operated at pretty low usage in those scenarios but the raptors have been really good in the clutch when pascal's available to them so you take away that or i mean take away the games pascal didn't play in and i don't have the updated numbers but not that long ago they were at like a 60 percent win clip in games that go within five points in the final five minutes, and Siakam's available to them. And yep. do you really care if if Siakam has the ball out of a timeout and he scores on one of those push shots or he draws attention and kicks out to Fred, who has been one of the most clutch three-point shooters in the league this year, do you really care who gets the bucket? I don't think so. You care about the W. No, and that's something that the Raptors have navigated a lot better this year than last year, and Pascal's first year is kind of the guy. Yeah, I think I think we're all in agreement. Like We're not really that stressed about Pascal. Going no. to the playoffs, and I think that's and a pretty big that's a pretty big no, compliment it, to him. No, it, it really is, but it's not just us being trying to be overly positive. I think he's changed his game. Yep, yeah. and also just situation. like in terms of how we evaluate guys, like it's been two years. If you're not gonna give him a chance with a fresh set of eyes, like like I said at the top yeah, of that's this, on you, it, really. it's like what else would he have had to show you to get you to be like, okay, I'll give you another chance in a playoff series. Like I don't know what else other than becoming like a forty percent three point shooter. I don't know what else he could have done. 